Hello everybody, you're welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. After downing a bottle of some good stuff with a few friends last weekend, I began to wax all philosophical and threw out the question to my companions. What really is power? The tiny Caribbean nation of Jamaica has about 3 million people. That's less than half of the population of London or New York City and four times smaller than the population of Rio de Janeiro. However, Jamaica is a cultural superpower as its music, icons, style and patois has taken roots all over the planet without needing an army of conquests to impose its culture. That, my dear viewers, is power. The engine room of Jamaica's cultural takeover of the world over the last six decades is a 200-acre housing settlement that the world has come to know as Trenchtown, the literal ground zero of Jamaican popular music and the birthplace of reggae, the greatest genre of music on the planet. No matter where you are in the world, once you hear the name Trenchtown, what comes to mind are music, good vibes and Rastafari. It's amazing the colossal cultural impact that such a tiny community has had on the world. It started out as a government housing project for low-income people, but eight decades later, it's known more as the cradle of reggae's greatest heroes. Just like Detroit is famous as the home of soul music with its assembly line of artists from the Motown record label, and Memphis is a spiritual home to country music with the Stax record label. Trenchtown has since sealed its place as a launch pad from which reggae music emerged in the 1960s and proceeded to first take over Britain before sweeping across the globe one country at a time. It's been said that the story of Trenchtown is the story of modern Jamaica and despite its amazing cultural contributions to the world, it fell victim to the social problems in Jamaica. Now without further ado, let's take a look at the story of Trenchtown. Originally known as Trenchpen, it was named after its last single owner, Daniel Power Trench, the son of James Trench, a wealthy plantation owner who had emigrated to Jamaica from Ireland in the 16th century. Daniel Trench owned an estate called Greenwich Park and before he died, he willed it to his family before passing away in 1884. But in 1907, a huge earthquake destroyed the estate beyond remedy and over the years, it attracted thousands of squatters from around Kingston and from the rural areas of Jamaica who were looking for a better life in the city. By the 1930s, the government stepped in and bought it off from the Trench family. The then Colonial Central Housing Authority came up with the idea of building a model township that would absorb the squatters and migrants from around the country. The government reclaimed 200 acres, constructed its first set of low-cost housing units, and Trench Town was born. By the 1940s, it had become one of the fastest growing communities in Jamaica and became the destination for thousands of settlers from around the island. These country folk brought with them the musical elements of traditions like Kumina and Pokomania and fused it with Mento and this fusion eventually became what we know today as Ska, Rocksteady and Reggae. It was the children of this wave of migrants in the 1940s that would turn Jamaica into a cultural superpower. Some of these migrants were people like Sedela Booker and Thaddeus Livingston, the parents of Bob Marley and Bonnie Livingston. In those early days in Trenchtown, it was loaded with talented youth who were looking for careers in entertainment and sports, but most of them were interested in music. The neighborhood was literally bursting with singers and there would be kids singing on every street. In those days, the likes of the Wailers, Alton Ellis, Garth Dennis, Marcia Griffiths and countless others would have been a typical sight, rehearsing in backyards or communal kitchens. Before the 50s were over, the first musical act from Trenchtown to become recording artists were Noel Sims and Arthur Robinson, who cut their first record at Sims and Robinson, but to become more widely known as Bunny and Scully. But the first Trenchtown act to really achieve mainstream success was the duo of Higgs and Wilson, which was made up of Delroy Wilson and probably the most important figure in reggae music in Joe Higgs, but we'll come to him a bit later. Their debut single, O Mani O, was released under future Prime Minister Edward Siaga's West Indies record label in 1958 and sold a phenomenal 50,000 copies. Their success inspired an all-out explosion of Trenchtown artists who are now jamming to a new sound called Ska, a fusion of Mento, Calypso and American R&B. Producers like Coxum Dodd and Duke Reed began to harness the energy emanating from Trenchtown but the true catalysts came in the form of one half of Higgs and Wilson in the great Joe Higgs. In addition to him being a singer, songwriter and high school music teacher, he was passionate about imparting his musical knowledge to Trenchtown youth and would hold musical lessons for legions of wannabe singers. Just a few of the teenagers who learned the rudiments of music at Joe Higgs' feet included the Wailers, Jimmy Cliff, Judy Mowat, Derek Harriott, 
The Wailing Souls, and many more. It was that set that would go on to become the golden generation of reggae stars. The first of Joe Hicks' protégés to make it big was none other than Jimmy Cliff, who was taken on by producer Leslie Kong, who entered into the music business after hearing Jimmy Cliff sing. The Wailers were next to Blue when their song Simmer Down flew up to number one on the Jamaican charts in 1964. Floodgates were now open with an endless stream of Trenchtown artists bagging hits in the Jamaican charts. As the 60s came to a close, the increasingly squalid conditions in a rapidly deteriorating trench town would change the pace of the music. Ska, which had emerged at the beginning of the optimistic 1960s, slowed into rock steady and eventually morphed into reggae. And reggae's themes were highly different from those of Ska and rock steady. Reggae was focused on social issues as well as spiritual themes, as the influence of Rastafari had spread like wildfire with the visits of Emperor Haile Selassie in 1966. An entrenched town, Rasta leaders like Mortimer Plano became the arrowhead of the Rasta takeover that became the central core of reggae by the 1970s. By the dawn of the 1970s, the Whalers had signed with Island Records, had achieved international success and had put Trench Town on the international map. But despite the neighborhood's recognition as the birthplace of reggae, it was falling apart due to the larger problems bedeviling Jamaica as a whole. Jamaica's two main political parties, the Jamaican Labour Party, or JLP, and the People's National Party, or PNP, had been engaged in a fierce rivalry since Jamaica's independence in 1962. By the early 1970s, these political parties had started supplying supporters with weapons. And by the middle of that decade, the youth in the inner cities, especially Trench Town, had been largely polarized along political lines, moved in gangs, and it led to violence erupting in the streets of Kingston. One of the places where this low-grade civil war hit the hardest was Trench Town, which became split into two garrisons. Trench Town had two major roads in West Road and Collie Smith Drive, and of these major roads were 14 streets, named 1st to 14th. 1st to 7th Street were JLP territory, while 8th to 14th Street was controlled by the PNP, and this is what led to the creation of neighborhoods like Rema and Jungle effectively dividing a community which had been united in a common struggle and quest for a better life. If we're being frank, what happened to Trench Town is something of a tragedy. It was the community that produced the Whalers, Marshall Griffiths, the Mighty Diamonds, Alton Ellis, the Abyssinians, Toots and the Metals, the Paragon, Ernest Ranglin, and other greats too numerous to mention, but fell to government neglect and the evil games of politicians. But one bizarre irony of hard times is that it is often the fuel for creativity and despite the hardships and chaos of those days, the 70s still turned out to be the golden age of reggae music. Trench Town never recovered from the hellish climate of that decade and is still struggling with the problems of violent crime as the political thugs establish fiefdoms that still exist until today. It's no longer the creative hub that spawned the sound that swept across the world and inspired anthems like Trench Town Rock. All we have left to comfort ourselves are the memories and music that transport us back to a time when Trench Town was a place where the youth still moved in harmony and dreamed of attaining worldwide success. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, jobless.